Lassie lasses and great Dane daddies, scratch that good itch, align yourself with the Earth's magnetic field to do a poo, and do you mind if I scoop my butt across your carpet real quick? Bark, bark. Ooh. Bark, bark. It's time to bark tall to me. Oh, yeah, this it's a Persian one. Oh, right there. That's a Persian cat omen. <laughs> Gross. Welcome back to the pod. I am Omen Thomas Sade. And I am Nick McGill. Together we are that pack of feckless moans. And this, my little milk bones, is Talk Tell to Me. Your daily walk in the canine park of Prog Rock, in which natural ears Nick and out at the elbows Omen will pursue, retrieve, and slightly slobber on each and every song that Running With The Wolves rock band have ever tossed out into the field while saying, stay, stay, (laughs) stay, go get it. We will dutifully dash the double suspended gallop with dish-faced David Pegg. We will perk up our prick ears at the sound of pelvic pacing Doan Perry. And we will bite the hand that feeds us until, with infinite regret, we learn that it belongs to Martin Beaglebread Bar. And if we can pass muster on our versatility tests, go for the gold in nose work and tracking, and get 10 out of 10 for obedience and dock diving, we may just have a blue ribbon pinned on our coats by that goodest of boys, the canine of the tambourine, the (laughs) flute-honking hound of the Baskervilles, the musical mutt, he once kissed himself over a plate of spaghetti, it's Ian (laughs) Anal glands, Anderson. <laughs> I'm laughing over tambourine, but I would have also laughed at kissed himself over a plate of spaghetti because <laughs> that was really good too. But I was, I was still coming down from the tambourine. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It is a Christmas tradition in my household to watch Lady and the Tramp is on it really? Christmas Day. Yes, yeah. I did not know that. It's actually a Christmas film. Because Darling gets the the dog for Christmas, yeah. The puppy. Yeah, okay, I forgot about that. And then the end of the film is Christmas as well. That's one of those Christmas, not Christmas movies, basically. Yeah, like um, Die Hard. Yeah, uh, Hook. Hook is a Christmas movie for us. Great movie. Oh, so good. So good. We've, I know we've talked about it on, on the podcast before, but... Go watch it, everybody. Stop listening to this crap and go watch Hook. It's a classic. Speaking of (laughs) classics, uh, Nick, we have the pleasure of talking about an amazing Jethro Tull song today. What indeed is that very song? We are on one of the random bonus tracks that we have from this album of Catfish Rising. By our counting, we are on track number 11, the first of the bonus tracks. This is half of the sting that we use for album art. This is Sleeping With The Dog. Let's have a smell. Let's have a sniff. Let's lap it up. Nick McGill. Omen Sade. That was Sleeping With The Dog. Singular. Singular. Just a single dog. Initial thoughts. Omen Sade. First, right out of the bat. Go. Uh, sultry, uh, sultry, sultry sad, sultry sad and sexy. Sultanas. I'll take it. That's what I, that's my favorite order at the Chinese place down the street. <laughs> yeah, this, this is really... I would say typical of the album in the sense that it's very bluesy. It allows the singer to express his suffering in such a way that helps us relieve our own suffering. In a very sexy way. In a very sexy way, Kiff. In a very sexy way. And subheading is uh, lady problems. Right. So is it the lady problems, comma, sexy? I think the lady is sexy. 
and causes problems. I'm just trying to think of the folder that this falls in, in our, in our organizational tall catalog here. Right, right, right. Yes, I'd say sexy lady problems. Sexy, comma, lady, comma, problems. But not, not like white innocence or not like, not the, the ones where he's seeing the lady from afar and he can't, uh, the Correct. Budapest, you know? Right, right, right. This is a personal. Yes. He's personally in trouble. This isn't dangerous fantasies. This is dangerous realities. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Dangerous realities. What about you? Is this a song that you enjoy? I, I didn't realize how much I enjoyed it until like really just listening to it now. Until now, it's been one of those just like, it's the end of the album. It's a background song. It's, it's fun. It's funky, but it's never one that I've really like clicked with. But hearing mm-hmm. it now, like with the, like really focusing on it, really listening to all of those bits and pieces, it's a darn good song. It's really, yeah. really good musically. It's really, really good. Not to say anything lyrically, but I very much enjoyed the experience I just had the last four and a half minutes. Uh- <laughs> Best four and a half minutes of my Oof, life. So good. As my wife will tell you. <laughs> I I like about it that it has, it is simultaneously f- relaxed and extremely tense. Yeah. Yeah. It has the feeling of someone who is so accustomed to their own misery that they have relaxed into it. A constant, comfortable state of tension. Mm. And comfortable in the sense that, like, that's all I know. Yeah, totally. If I were to unclench, I would just turn to liquid. I wouldn't know who I was anymore. I would grow five feet, I'll tell you that. (laughs) I would unpucker. And there are a lot of people who define themselves by their suffering. Sure, yeah, the Buddhists are big about that. Well, they're- They just don't stop bitching about suffering. They're- (laughs) Um, <laughs> something like not, that. Yeah, not wrong. Not wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, hold on a second. No, their their whole thing is to escape suffering. <laughs> yeah, but they don't stop talking about it <laughs> about your suffering, not theirs. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Like, Nick, stop, stop suffering, please. We're suffering because of it. Let's talk about the music of this. Goodness gracious! I did some like really quick searching here to see who actually did that disgusting bass opener. Yeah. It's Peggy. Wow. It's Peggy Sr. He went to jail immediately after that. He used an entire joint of mutton to play the bass. (laughs) (laughs) It's so gamey. It's so meaty. It is. I really, I really enjoy it. And that really sets the tone for the whole rest of the song. Sure does. It's like, this is a below the waist song. Yeah. Yeah. Hand check, everybody. Hand check. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, if we didn't have that opener, sure, the whole thing would still be great. But there's something about, like, it's the sonic, the, the musical equivalent of saying, hey, come here, I have a story to tell you. And you're just like rubbing your greasy hands together. That bass line pulls you in off the street, throws you into a worn-out leather chair, pours you a double shot of bourbon with no label on it, <laughs> puts a cigarette in your mouth, lights it for you, and dims the lights. Yeah. I may be pregnant after that song. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely should get tested for TB. All sorts of things, yeah. So yes, amazingly funky bass. Flute and drums jump in. We've got bluesy guitar stings. Piano comes in. Piano slash keyboards played by a very special guest, apparently. Who's that? John Rabbit Bundrick is credited for keys on this song. Fascinating. Yeah. So the keys just by themselves are worth noting because they there's a mix. It's not just the piano sound. There is also some synth in there. Yeah. Early on, we hear the piano doing 
kind of 16th notes. On the chords. But then later on, we have it on the organ setting going. Yeah, that's where I noticed it most was the organ. Yeah. John Douglas Rabbit Bondrick. He's American. He played with The Who and oh. Bob Marley and the Wailers. He is the principal musician for the Rocky Horror Picture Show film. Wow. How bizarre. That really is strange. And Rocky Horror had come out by this point. I mean, this was what, 1891? Yeah, Rocky Horror Picture Show was 1975. Wow, so Yeah, old. mercy. Yeah, how interesting. How fascinating that is. Great work by him here on this track. Mm -hmm. It adds to the dirtiness. It adds another skim of filth on top or underneath the whole thing. Yeah. It's like you walk into an old room and you, you run your finger across a dusty thing and it doesn't take all the dust away. You got to get there a couple <laughs> of times to really get through all of those layers. You pull up the carpet of the <sighs> of the lyrics and guitar because it's so nasty. And underneath uh -huh. you realize that the floorboards themselves are actually rotted, full of mold. Yeah, do not buy this house. Do not Don't buy this house. <laughs> it will not pass. Throw inspection. a rock at it. <laughs> Ian comes in 42 seconds in with his first line, her love is like a candle. Um, interesting vote. Oh, yes. Before that, we got the dog bark, right? Oh, yes. Special guest, Doggy Dogson. It sounds to me like when you drive by a Bow Wow on Rainbow Road, a chain shop, it's the exact sound. Interesting. In Mario Kart, it's the exact sound. I'm, I swear to it. I wonder if there's some story about this was somebody's dog that was recorded, or I wonder if it's a stock recording. Yeah, right. It does seem like it's the same bark sampled and put every single time like there's not variations mm -hmm. yeah sorry ian at 42 at 42 seconds in ian begins singing her love is like a candle you light it up at night interesting vocal quality for this we don't really have that billy goat type of singing that we've no. been, been talking about it's fairly straight blues rock and roll voice he goes up real high in a number of places yeah, it's I, I'm not sure if it's a key change or what, but it's pretty darn close. It's like the second to last or maybe even the last of the, the chorus of She Leaves Me Breathing. He gets way up there. She leaves me breathing. He has some sublimated vocal ejacks. They're not really pushed out. Yeah. She's got a hand like brushed velvet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Soft touch like brush velvet. <laughs> it's really interesting. It's it sounds like it's almost for himself. Yeah. More than for anyone else's benefit, which is lovely. He's there present in his own moment. Yeah. He's like, let me tell you about this lady. And then he remembers something about her. And he's yeah. Like, Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, I got to keep I, I got to keep singing. At 240, we get a come on. Yep. Yep. Come on. Oh, wow, the come on is actually written in the lyrics. I didn't realize that. Uh-huh. It is, yeah. We do get another one that's that's not. I think he, he says something right before one of the recitations of the chorus. Yes, there are a couple others spattered in there. Yeah. Switching over to Martin for a second, he is kind of coming in to comment, as he has been doing for a lot of this album. Mm -hmm. On the second verse on the line, she's got a tongue like a viper. He hits a couple of notes in overdrive that you have to be careful to not be too close to the speaker because <laughs> it, they are so like tense. I actually had to back away from my my phone when I was listening to it because it's just like, ee! yeah, it's so is ear splitting in such an appropriate way. Yeah. But she got a tongue like a viper but she can to represent the sharp tongue of the lady in question. 
Indeed, like a viper. Like a vampire. That's how she smells, I guess, with her sharp tongue. Mm -hmm. That's what snakes do with their tongues. Yeah, that's not all they do with their tongues. Eat ice cream. That's the other one. Yep. Yep. At 250, we have a really great back and forth between the guitar and the flute. We haven't talked much about the flute. Oh, yeah. Flute's in here. It's present. It's in here. It's present and accounted for. And there's actually some really great moments with the flute that seem very classic tall to me. And I Mm. did not write down. Oh, yes. At four minutes, just about exactly four minutes, maybe a second before, we have some flute singing where Ian goes, shipper chip boop shipper chip Oh, yeah. shipper chip boop I like it. it was one of those. Yeah, I, everything else was so meaty, such a ragu to me that I, I kind of missed the flute. That's not an unusual tall sound. The shabadabub. No, but it's classic. That's what I'm getting at. That's I, I concur with you that like it kind of just glazed over the top where I was really down in the dirt and kind of focusing more on the stuff that brought the body of the music. There is something about the food metaphor that you use, which is this is such a a thick broth. Yeah. And it feels like it's been simmering so long that like the broth has penetrated the potato of the flute so far that when you (laughs) bite through the flute potato, you're like, well, it's all tastes kind of the same. And there's a lot of flute starch in the, in the organ syrup. Couldn't it have been a carrot? At least it's, it's that makes a shaped. lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't think that one through. <laughs> what is this, a parsnip? I'll take a parsnip. Who yeah. put corn in here? <laughs> oh, why would you put it in a stew? Oh, I really want a good bowl of stew. <laughs> I had, for Damn. lunch, I had a, I had a barley chicken soup that I made. Mm. Oh, girl, yeah. Oh, I felt like a gladiator. <laughs> I was ready to die for my my emperor. Anything else to say about the musicality of this song? For instance, the time signature. 3-3, three, three, you say? It's a 3-3, three, three. yeah. Or 6-6. Six, six. I would say that it is... You're so close. Ah. I think it's 6-8. The second number determines the, the size of the note that is counted as one. Mm. Okay. So there's not really any such thing as a sixth note, at least in traditional. Right, yeah. So it has to be 6-8 for an eighth note or four, four for a, a quarter note. Oh, okay. So it has to be in fours on the bottom in twos, at least or in twos. Yeah. But six is a two. So two, four, eight, 16, 32 that probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I agree. I think it's in six, eight. Yeah. You could actually count it in the slowest four ever counted to man. Yeah. One, two, three four but it's it feels wrong i think it's more one two three four five six one two three four five six yeah or one two three one two three the beat itself has a rapidity whereas everything else is just stretched out underneath it's very weird and difficult to put to words but there's a there's a quickness on top of that yes. that slow flowing river and that's what, yes, that's actually really well said. And I would say that to break it down, the one of that six or of that three, let's call it three, the one of that three is what gives you that slow driving feeling where the drum and the bass can really hang out. Bum, dum, yeah, dum. And then you have the counterpoint to it, the dum, 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 and it, it that exactly like you said, it's it's a slow moving current underneath and it's got rapids on the top. It's a three, four versus a six, eight, basically both playing at the same time. They're in the same signature, essentially. Yeah. 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 OK, cool. And the effect is that it feels both lugubrious and up tempo. Yeah. Yeah. And it's effective. Boy, howdy. It's effective. It's really cool. Yeah. You can focus down on the slow and like really get into it in the body and then your ear can pick up on the the quicker and it picks you right back up. You could fluctuate up and down with this thing. There's never a point where it's like, this is the slow part and this is the fast part. 
And the structure is appropriate to the content. We're talking about a relationship that kind of seems to exist on two different levels simultaneously. And you mm. never really know which of those currents you're being caught in. Yeah, that's good. That's a good catch. Yeah. Songs about dogs, Nick. <sighs> Snoop Doggy Dog by Real Big Fish. Okay, yeah. How much is that doggy in the window? Yeah. The more boys I meet. That's about dogs. Parentheses, the, the more I want a dog, Carrie Underwood. Oh, okay. Cracker Jack, Dolly Parton. Okay. Who Let the Dogs Out, Baja Men. Of course. Yeah. Old Blue, The Birds. Dogs in Midwinter, obviously. Dogs in Midwinter. Old Blue, Old Shep. Old Red. <laughs> Actually, Old Red is one of my favorite country songs. Really? Who's it by? Blake Shelton. Now there's red-haired blue ticks all through the South. Love got me in here and love got me out. Now there's red-haired blue ticks all in the South. Love got me in here and love got me out. It's about a dog and uh, and a murder. He loves the dog? No, he killed his wife's lover. The dog did? No, <laughs> Blake, Blake, the singer, killed his wife's lover. He went to prison. And he plans an escape mm -hmm. from prison. The thing is, anytime anybody escapes from prison, the warden lets his dog out, who's this famous dog, All Red, who tracks him down and trees him. So he gets in contact with his cousin, who gets a very sexy lady dog <laughs> and has her meet the guard dog every night for a couple of weeks. And then she's in heat and he takes her real far away. And so the dog is the guard dog is like is let out to go trap the singer. And he goes in the other direction because he wants to go see his girlfriend. He looney tunes it and puts the dog in a dress and lipstick. <laughs> And woos Elmer Fudd for, for a fortnight. Yeah. Kind yeah, of. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Black Eyed Dog, Nick Drake. I cannot think of any, any others off the top of my head. Dirty Old Egg Sucking Dog, Johnny Cash. We could go on. We could. We won't, though. Nick, welcome to the halfway point. We have some things to talk about and talk we should. Let's start with album art, shall we? Let's do that. Okay, so we are looking at the album art for Catfish Rising. Very lovely. This is one of your favorites, right? You said? I love it. I think it's gorgeous. If this wasn't in 1991, this would actually be a cutout so that we got the front. It's all black and we've got Jethro Tull and then like the catfish design jumping out of the water. Uh-huh. But under the coloration of these things, of the, the fish and the water and the little design and the Jethro Tull, it looks like there's a pattern or an image of something underneath. So the catfish oh. and the words look like they're cut out, but they're not actually cut out. That would be cool. It'd be neat to be able to like slide out the colorful part. Exactly. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I think if this were maybe 20 years, 10 years before this album came out, it would be a cutout. I think they would have, they would have sprung for the cutout and then the sleeve, the album sleeve would have had those colors on it. Ah, that's my guess. In reality, they don't. They do not. They do not. So we've got that all black. We've got the really, I love the color scheme. I really, really love the pattern of the colors is beautiful. So we've got the cutout catfish jumping out. We've got two little kind of florets, one on either side of the fish. Mm -hmm. Jethro Tull on top, catfish rising on the bottom. Pretty simple. Mine has a sticker on it that says limited edition contains three track 12 inch, including when Jesus came to play sleeping with the dog and white innocence. Oh, it's on a separate piece of vinyl. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Which is something to know. That bonus had White Innocence as a bonus. Wow. Whereas we talked about it as the main body, yeah. whereas 
track number 10 on this album is Gold Tip Boots, Black Jacket and Tie. Interesting. Very interesting. So we turn to the back and we've got our lineup, side one, side two of the songs. And we've got the kind of curly Q monogrammed JT. Coming to an ankle near you. That's right. A sexy, sexy ankle. Worth noting that Ian has said that this is one of his least favorite album covers. Because it's so dark. It's so dark that there was nowhere to sign yeah. autographs. Right. And he mentions Spinal Tap, which I think in what they're like their second album or something. They put out the, the entire cover is just black. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. On the sleeve we pull out, we've got lyrics on one side. Mm. They all fit neatly on the one square. On the back, we've got another rundown of the track listing, but we've also got uh, thanks and personnel. Yep. I'm not going to read them all, but there are some things of note here. For Ian, it says musicians, Ian, vocals, acoustic and electric guitars, acoustic and electric mandolins, flute and percussion, drums and keyboards on a couple of things. You figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) Can't be asked. Martin Barr, electric guitar, as always. Mm -hmm. David Pegg, electric and acoustic bass, except when washing hair. Doan Perry, drums, (laughs) absolutely no tambourine. (laughs) Matt Pegg, bass guitar on This Is Not Love, Rocks on the Road, and Still Loving You Tonight, When Father Was Washing Hair. Oh my god, so silly. Ian Anderson would like to thank flutes, strings, guitars, microphones, blah blah blah. Shona Anderson for nothing in particular, but everything in general. Huh. Martin Barr would like to thank various instruments and his wife. <laughs> various instruments and his wife? That's funny. Well, I mean, it's... it's yeah, no, I, I just... Yeah. David Pegg would like to thank various instruments, his son, and Martin's wife. <laughs> and then there's some more stuff, but at the very end, we've got Designed by Phil Rogers and John Pash. We've definitely heard those names before. Uh Illustration by Jim Gibson, who did a couple of albums designs prior. And the monogram by Jeff Halpin. And then we've got that big JT monogram as well, just not as cut out fancy on the back. Right. It's just the T is yellow and the J is gray. And that's it. I would say that Dave Pegg currently has precious little hair to wash, but in the... Oh, he's super bald, yeah. In the early 90s, he did have quite a lovely mop. Oh, yeah, he was, he was a handsome guy. I think I remember seeing pictures of the time, and he's, he's a pretty charming-looking charming chap. And quite beharred, quite hirsute. Hirsute. That's it for that. Pretty simple. Just some, the notes of, the, of people thanking each other's wives and sons and things, I thought was pretty cute. And it, it's, I do love that art. Aside from, yes, it's crazy, crazy black dark. But what bits we do see, it really makes them pop. It makes them stand out and makes them more effective. And I think, you know, we were just talking about how that song musically exists on two different levels, that you've got that deep flowing. Yeah. For me, what a lot of this album is about is the beauty of the flash of that mysterious fish coming out of these dark, muddy, turbid waters. Mm finding the beauty within the day-to-day muddy nastiness. Yeah, the turbot waters. <laughs> the turbot waters. It's like the Buddhists say, have, you, have I mentioned the Buddhists, Nick? It's like the Buddhists ah. say, no mud, no lotus. No mud, no catfish. No money, no problems. Mo, Mo money, more problems. I got 99 problems, but attachment to worldly concerns ain't one. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny indeed. We have an email. We actually have two emails. Yes. Why don't you read yours first, Omen? Very good. We have former writer inner, continuous writer inner, occasional writer inner, Greggy K, who writes, subject, roll your own. Hello, friends. I just finished listening to your episode on the song, Roll Your Own. Again, a wonderful job by you both. I mentioned in a previous message that I've met Ian and the band a couple of times, but I don't remember if I pointed out that on that first occasion, during the Rock Island tour, Ian was smoking an enormous, malodorous, and absolutely miasmatic hand-rolled cigarette-slash-cigar. 
A cloud of the most foul-smelling smoke followed him as he moved through the room, and he seemed to be enjoying it enormously. <laughs> Makes me think of Bender from Futurama. Yeah, definitely. I think your interpretation that the song may be about both hand-rolled ciggies and masturbation may indeed apply. At least, that's how I always saw it. He probably was writing many songs for the next album during this time frame. Don't know about the other. I was delighted to hear that both Mary and Marley returned during this show. I had a smile on my face all day. They're wonderful characters and have been missed. Warmest regards, Greggy K. Well, that's nice to hear. Thank you so much, Greggy K. How sweet. Yeah, I, I don't think that they'll be around today because they're both off for National Hugging Day. That's it. They hugged each other and then rolled down a hill. We didn't want to be around for that. No. It is a religious observation holiday for them. We let them have it. Yeah. And our doctors recommended against it. Yeah. I don't have all of my shots yet. But thank you, Greggy K, for writing in. Wonderful to hear your experience with Ian's fumatory habits. <laughs> I love miasmatic as a word. What a great word. What does that mean? What's the definition of miasmatic? Miasma is like, oh. a, like a, a thick... Thick soupy. Pea soup fog. Yeah, a pea, a pea souper, yeah. Yeah. So miasmatic would be the adjective, I guess. A soupy cigar. Yeah, soupy twist. Nick, who else have we got on the docket? On the docket, we have another return writer in her. No one other than Folky Phil writes in. Folky Phil, always a pleasure. Folky Phil writes in and says, Jethro Tull, the movie. So I asked ChatGPT to write a movie outline for a drama about Jethro Tull. The result was, perhaps reassuringly, unimaginative and pedestrian. Ah, but the suggested cast list was interesting. What do you think? So the suggested cast list of Tull. Ian Anderson, lead vocals, flute, guitar, played by Joseph Fines. Fines has the versatility to portray Anderson's charismatic stage presence and musical passion. It's Joseph Fines. He is Ralph Fiennes' younger brother. Oh, interesting. You would recognize him if you saw him. Martin Barr guitar, played by Tom Hardy. Hardy's acting range and ability to embody different characters make him a suitable choice for the role of Martin Barr. I would love to see him play Martin Barr. I don't think he's short enough to play Martin Barr, but... And he's too much of a beefcake. They could dig a ditch for him. They could, yeah. Do the old reverse Tom Cruise. Reverse Apple Box. Yeah. Yeah. I got a reverse Tom Cruise once in college. Yeah. Never recovered. My hip joint's never been the same. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Glenn Cornick bass. Aiden Turner, known for his roles in historical dramas, Turner could bring depth to the character of Glenn Cornick. Yeah, he's an Irish actor, got a fabulous mustache. Yep, yep. Clive Bunker on drums. Tom Holland. <laughs> That's very funny. Holland's youthful energy and acting skill could portray the early years of Clive Bunker in the band. I could see it. He's a little baby face, though. I think I would make him Martin now that I think about it. He's got a... Tom Holland has a serious baby face. I think he could do it, though, because he has that kind of detached, happy-go-lucky energy. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He could he could do both. John Evan on keyboards, played by Damo Gleeson, one of our favorites in this house. He's, he's a treat to watch. Another Irish actor. As is his, his dad. Brendan Gleeson. Gleeson's ability to convey depth in his roles makes him a good fit for capturing the nuanced character of John Evan. Hard agree on that one. And then Jeffrey Hammond, 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 Hammond on bass. Eddie Redmayne. Redmayne's ability to portray both intensity and vulnerability could bring Jeffrey Hammond's character to life. I gotta say, I mean, that's pretty darn good. That's pretty darn good. And it inspires me to, to ask ChatGPT to cast Ray and I play this game every now and then, a property that we really love. We try to figure out which, which celebrity would play those roles. Yeah. And seeing that ChatGPT did such a good job with it, I'm, not, I'm intrigued to try it myself. Who would play you in the film version of the Feckless Moms? Feckless Moms, the movie. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask ChatGPT, who would play me in a movie? <laughs> You'd actually be played by ChatGPT. I would. <laughs> <laughs> it has the range and emotional depth to accurately yep. portray mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yeah, very accurate, very accurate. I don't know, maybe like Charlie Day. I'd be super flattered to be played by Charlie Day. Who's Charlie Day? He plays Charlie in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, the yeah. kind of small gremlin-y guy. Yeah, that's funny. I would request either him or 
what's his name? Hang on. A uh, Ben Schwartz. Ben Schwartz. I look nothing like him, but God, is he funny. He's a very good actor. Is he from Parks and Recreation? He's from Parks. He's John Ralphio in Parks and Rec. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. That's great. And you would be played by Aziz Ansari from Parks and Rec. I, <laughs> I don't know about that. No. I was thinking Taika Waititi, if he was available. Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. My aspiration is to have a life that could only be represented on screen by Matt Berry. Oh, those are two very good choices. But I don't know if I'm there yet. Yeah, so if you're going Taika Waititi, then I'm going to go, I, I would like to be Reese Darby. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the conversation, Folky Phil, and for the cast list. We will get on the phone with those agents and put it together immediately. Now all we need is a script and funding and a camera. Pronto. We will talk to Ian about that. Yep. Omen. Oh, here we are, second half. Let's talk lyrics about sleeping with the dog. So what is the phrase? Where the title, as is typical with Ian, or is at least not uncommon with Ian, the title of the song is a reference to a common turn of phrase. Right. Sleeping with the dog or in the doghouse, you know, if you are kicked out of the bed by your significant other or insignificant other, I'm not judging, you are being punished by sleeping with the dog. It's, I mean, it's the equivalent of sleeping on the couch, but it's even worse because you have to go to the dog house. I am an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> what did, how did you interpret it, Omen? That she was the dog? <laughs> oh, wow. What I was imagining was the phrase, if you lay down with dogs, you will get up with fleas. Interesting. But maybe my perspective on this song is colored by a former relationship that I had. Highly possible. And mine is colored by a present relationship that I had. By having a dog. <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny. I think that your interpretation of, I'm sleeping with the dog because I'm not allowed in the bed. Yeah. Is probably far more likely to be the one intended. Yeah, I think so. I think so. That's very funny though. Yeah. Her love is like a candle. You light it up. At night, her heart is like a pack of cards. One chance to guess it right. Sometimes I do. Her love is like a candle. You light it up at night. Her heart is like a pack of cards. One chance to guess it right. Sometimes I do. Sometimes. That's the key term right there. Sometimes no. I do. One out of 52 times. <laughs> That's right. That I don't have to sleep with the dog. Yeah. I'm sure the dog's happy about it. We start with like, she's delicate and she's mysterious and I'm with her and this is exciting, but sometimes I, I screw up. And this next verse we get, she's still beautiful and mysterious, but we also get the consequence of what happens when I screw up? Yes, and it's presented in the form of a set of antitheses, like with Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a tongue like a viper. Squee! But <laughs> she can whisper like a dove. She got a tongue like a viper, but she can whisper like a dove. <laughs> Quite interesting. She, you know, rather than saying she has a voice like a dove, but she can hiss like a viper... Mm -hmm. He says her innate nature is that of this dangerous creature. Yeah. But she can. Exactly. Yeah, right. She's got a versus she can. Right. Yeah. Soft touch like brushed velvet till she hits you from above. Soft touch like brushed velvet till she hits you from above. I, for some reason, have the image of like, Velvet wrapped around an anvil. <laughs> <laughs> Very cartoony. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And as he's walking out to the doghouse, she drops it on him out the window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He accordions and then walks over to the doghouse. Yeah. You know, there's something about this song and the composition of, of this song that, that is almost classical. I mean, it almost goes back, really does go back hundreds, if not thousands of years, if you think of The Taming of the Shrew. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. The woman with the tongue like a viper. Yes, we know that. Right. Bit out of date these days, but it has a long cultural history on which to stand. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes she does, going back to the tongue like a viper and the brushed velvet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes she does hit you from above when you're least expecting it. Oh, right. And that's that's something to note, too. So we started with she's got something bad, but she can do something good. And then the next line is she's got something good until she does something bad. Right. She's not like a two sides of the same coin. She's a very well-rounded character here. She's a complex human being. Yeah, exactly. And then we get into our chorus. Yes. Which, interesting that the way the composition of the music is such that that first setup is sung in this minory sounding mysterious Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. scale. Yeah. When we switch to the chorus, it lifts. She leaves me breathing down like a fallen log. It has a more positive sonic connotation to it. Yeah. So what is she leaves me breathing down like a fallen log? Fallen log like makes me think fallen log tied with this whole sleeping thing makes me feel like sleeping like a log, you know, like you sleep really well. If she comes at you from above dropping an anvil, you'll sleep pretty darn well. That's how I interpret it. Right? I interpret it as, you know, sometimes it's it's the sucker punch lights out Mm. three, two, one match over. The birds and stars flying over your head, if we're keeping with our cartoon. It's that sense of the unpredictability of of this relationship Mm -hmm. that he's bemoaning. But also, if we read between the lines, maybe that's part of the appeal to it as as well. Oh, sure. Yeah. Just when I feel like dancing, I wake up sleeping with the dog. Yeah. And it goes woof, sleeping with the dog, woof. Just when I feel like dancing. Oh, you know, there's that there's that trope in movies from the 90s and early 2000s where, you know, the guy rolls over in bed and he's like, oh, honey, mm, you know, whatever, last night. And then he realizes that he's actually cuddling the dog. <laughs> Very 90s sitcom. Yeah. 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 So we get just when I feel like dancing, he does not know this is coming. He does not know he screwed up. He thinks everything is fine. Probably even the opposite. He's like, oh, I did. I I was a good husband today. I did that nice thing. Yeah. Wham! I brought out the trash after she asked me seven times. Right. Yeah. This is very sitcom-y now that I think about it. Very 90s sitcom. It's very traditional in terms of how kind of the boomer generation viewed relationships between men and women. Yeah. Which weirdly, in this context, even though I don't agree with that, it's such a good song that I almost find it comforting. Well, like any stereotype, there is the tiniest nugget of truth that the pearl grows around, you know? So, I mean, there is some level of reality here that has been blown out of proportion that if you you look through the fun house mirrors and it's all wibbly wobbly, you know? Yeah, that's a great way of saying it. And I think maybe the core of the reality here is that men are often idiots <laughs> when it comes to relationships. Yeah. And this is a generation that didn't really prioritize communication. Right. That is certainly helped by just when I feel like dancing, I wake up sleeping with the dogs. Exactly. And it also ties into our next verse as well, I think. I have to guess at the mysteries of her unfathomable soul. I have to guess at the mysteries of her unfathomable soul. That to me ties a little bit back to the deck of cards, almost like you're you're trying to divine the future. Yeah. Guess when the time seems right to make a broken spirit whole. Guess when the time seems right to make a broken spirit whole. What do you make of that? I think he's already screwed up. He has a chance to set things right. He doesn't know what the hell to do. He guesses. And if he's right, the relationship is repaired until the next time. Right. But if he's 30 seconds off. Yeah. Or he compliments the wrong thing. Or he says something about 
the lady who bakes the bread, you know, something. The lady who bakes the bread. It's spilled again, you know. There is that broken spirit. The spirit continues to be broken. Yeah. And that time is due. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> that time is due. interesting sense of impatience there i mean impatience but also patience you know like there's this sense of yes this is how things are and i just have to keep guessing yeah and what we don't see is well i guess we do see it it's the reason that he's still staying in this relationship is she can whisper like a dove she has a touch like brushed velvet her love is like a candle you know there's all this yeah there's this beautiful side to it he's focusing in he's focusing our attention on the the unfathomable mysteries. Yeah. It does seem like there's a sense of respect, you know, unlike yeah. other songs in this category, which are just, I hate my wife, can't wait till she dies type of. Yeah, there is like a, I don't know if it's necessarily a conscious cat and mouse, but there is a little give and take here, it feels like. Mm. And I mean, we've all, I have to be right in this. We've all known a couple here and there that are just constantly fighting one weekend, getting along great the next time you see them, sniping at each other, embracing one another. I've been that couple. Yeah, just you. Just, just my relationship <laughs> with myself, <laughs> yeah, let alone another person. Yeah, absolutely. And, and often, you know, you kind of look at that and say, well, I don't know what to make of it. They seem like they're in general happy. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's one of those couples that you're like, why are they still together? Are they breaking up? And then you see them like really, really like in a sweet moment. It's like, oh, okay, I guess if they can, if they can get past those moments. Great. You know, it's funny, though, you kind of mentioned this earlier in the, the second verse, how what we're what we're being given is not a two dimensional character. We're being given this very fleshed out three dimensional character. Yeah. This to me sounds less, this song as we're looking through it feels less to me like a, my relationship is chaotic. I never know what's coming. And more just almost a self-effacing critique of the singer's self as a partner. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Because it, it's not, my wife is so crazy that I have to sleep with the dog. Right. It's. I'm not good at guessing. I'm not good at probing the unfathomable mysteries. Exactly. And so if I'm sleeping in the doghouse, at least that's close to where she lives. <laughs> right. These are the things, 20 years together, these are the things that I figured out that I can't figure out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. I love that. Yeah, that makes this really sweet. It's not so much like, oh, that's a weird relationship. It's like, I am still trying to figure you out. Yeah, and that something that has always slightly bothered me about this song is I I kind of thought like, oh, is this a unhappy marriage song? I don't think it is. I think this is a no. a great respect for one's partner song. Yeah. In a way that is humorous and self-deprecating. Yeah. The best type of humor. Punching down on yourself. Punching yourself while you're down. Yeah. Self-deprecation. I cannot get enough self-deprecation. So funny. Speaking of sting, as I like to do. <laughs> Everybody take a shot. <laughs> Buddhism, sting. <laughs> oh, there's got to be like one or two other. You saying nu nuclear. That's a third. <laughs> and butt stuff. And butt stuff. Mercury Falling, 1996. Very same, similar time period. Yep. Sting has a song called All Four Seasons. With her smile as sweet as warm wind in summer, she's got me flying like a bird in bright June sky. And then just when she thinks that I've got her number, brings me down to the ground with her wintry eye, that's my baby, she can be all four seasons in one day. Similar. Great song. He has more awareness of it. She doesn't seem to be terribly mysterious as opposed to our candle lady over here. 
True. Yes. It's more of a comparison. It's more of another common metaphor when it comes to men describing women in song, saying she's a force of nature. She is like the natural world. Mm -hmm. This is more on the on a human level, using metaphor to describe yeah. the complexity of every person who happens to be this person. <laughs> Correct. Mm, yeah. We repeat the last chorus again. She leaves me breathing down like a fallen log. Just when I feel like dancing, I wake up sleeping with the dog and it goes. Woof, woof, woof. Sleeping with the dog. Woof, 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 woof. Bow Wow goes by on Rainbow Road. <laughs> yes. Convinced. I'm putting that sound effect in here several times. Bow Wow Wow, yippee-yo, yippee-yay. Bow Wow, yippee-yo, yippee-yay. Bow Wow, yippee-yo, yippee-yay. Bow Wow, yippee-yo, yippee-yay. Nick, have you ever shared a sleeping space with a little, with a nice doggy? When training our puppies, when like we first get the puppies, we always sleep on the floor with them yeah. to get them like accustomed to us. Ray did the bulk of that this time around with Noggin, but I, I always did it as a kid. I've never had a dog, but I am a, I'm a dunkle. You are a dunkle. And, uh, and I've had the pleasure of napping with a dog before, and it's really nice. It is. You could do worse. Yeah, depending on the size of the dog and the age of the dog, I think. But if we could trust Noggin not to like wander off and chew the hell out of something, it'd be really nice to have her in the bed. Yeah. Yeah. Something warm in the bed, at least. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love my wife. I love your wife, too. I'd like to thank your wife. Nick, what are we talking about next week here on the Talk Tall to Me podcast? I believe this is one of Jupson's least favorite songs. And I think you like this song a lot. This is one of, if not possibly my very favorite tall song ever. Is it really? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard to pick something yeah, to say absolute, right. but definitely top five. Yeah. It is gold-tipped boots, black jacket, and tie. I could be wrong. It might be when Jesus came to play that Jupson doesn't like. It might be both of them, but I know, I know I've seen him comment on, on either one of these before. Until next week, it may not be soft like brushed velvet, but it's soft like brushed cotton. A <laughs> branded Talk Tall to Me t-shirt from our Tee Public site can, can comfort you in the dark night. You need to make your broken spirit whole. And the best way to do that is to subscribe to our Patreon. The missing pieces of your soul consist of access to our Discord server and two <laughs> monthly podcasts, Outtake Tall to Me and Feckless. And if you got a really big hole, you can fill that with the video podcast as well. And of course, everyone, our wonderful community on the Discord chat will be happy to fill your holes for you. Yes. So welcoming. So warm. Until next week, I am the sleeping dog, Nick McGill. I go woof, Omen Thomas said. We feel like dancing. We're the feckless moms. And our mysteries are unfathomable. This is Talk Tall to Me. <sighs> oh, I shouldn't. Shouldn't have said that her sister looked good in that dress. Oh my god, I can't believe what an idiot I am. Oh, at least, at least I've got this, this doghouse I built to sleep in. Let me get, squeeze my way. Hey, hey, Oh, watch where you put your foot. Come oh on. my god, Ted, is that you? Yeah, Mark, what are you doing? Well, you know, I, I said something dumb to the missus. She, she kicked me out. What are you doing in here? This is uh, it's my doghouse. I forgot to take out the trash. Oh, buddy. You know what? And we have a Pekingese. I can't fit in that doghouse. I figured you and Karen were on great terms last time I saw you, so I figured it'd be safe to crawl in here on my own. But You know what? I'm glad that I built this doghouse 30 years ago. I'm glad that we have kept 
a series of dogs just for my own sake. You know, last week I was in here. You know why? You know why? This is crazy. This is why? crazy. What'd you do? What'd you do? Tell me. I bought the wrong shape of milk. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Same milk. Same yeah, milk inside. Right. The bottle was the wrong, sh- wrong shape. Wow. wow. Would you have kicked me out of the house for that? No. No. I I think I'd be fine with any milk. Yeah. 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 You know what? You know what I did this time. What, you know what, what was this it? time? I did not sort the colors oh. from the whites. Oh. I sorted the pinks. Oh no! Just the pinks. Oh my god! I got in trouble. You know what? I think you deserve this. I I installed a beer fridge in here. Oh, nice. Here you go. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Drink up. Very Drink good. Up. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. You know, I was actually thinking about expanding the doghouse because yeah. it just seems like I can't do anything right. The other day, we were having breakfast. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm not so good with my words sometimes. And I meant to say, honey, I love you. Can you pass the sugar? And instead, I said, I regret marrying you. And she freaked out. I don't know why. Did she pass the sugar, though? She passed it to me in her fist. Oh, wow. Yeah, she wow. threw it at me. I mean, a simple mistake. I, 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 she slip at the tongue. Slip at the tongue. It's super, super simple. Yeah. That must have been last Wednesday, right? When I heard all that yelling in the morning? Yeah. Was that, you know, I noticed that they were, you had a, a bulldozer at your house. What was that all about? Sure did. Yeah. Sure did. So Tammy wanted a pool. She wanted a pool. Oh, yeah. I wanted a driveway. Sure. You know, we live, we don't have a driveway. I mean, we've got some some stone. We wanted paving. No, you need a place to put your car that's not a pool. So I said, my money, my driveway. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, she ran over my foot with, oh, uh, with the bulldozer. She rented the bulldozer, the bulldozer yep. to run over your foot. Yeah, I had rented it before. She paid more just to to shark my rental. Yeah, oh, and wow. then rolled over it. Wow. And she didn't pay for the insurance. She's she's so feisty. I, I got stuck with it. She's feisty. I mean, that's why I love Tammy. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's why I fell in love with her. I would never, I would never in a million years want to be with anyone but Karen. It's so great. I love our relationship. And you know what I love most about it? Every day is an adventure. Yeah. Right. Am I going to get us a steak dinner and a back rub, or am I going to get sent into the countryside with nothing but a loaf of bread, a bottle of water, and a single revolver with one bullet in it? I mean, that seems pretty generous for how Karen's been acting lately. I know, I know. You know, I just, I just, every day, I just want to please her. And that's actually why I got her a Valentine's Day gift. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Kind of, kind of ease the tension, eh? That's right. Yeah. I yeah. got her. I got, don't tell her this. I got her a podcast. Oh, she's going to love that. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to love that. Is it one that she would like to listen to? It, I mean, it's, it's got to be, right? I think so. I think so. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard it. You know, this is, this is the kind of thing that wives like. It's, uh, yeah. It's talk tall to me. Oh my God. All the wives love talk tall to me. Yeah. Well, it's a proud member of the Feckless Moms Audio Network. How could they not? Hey guys, I'm I'm trying to sleep over here at the other what? side of the doghouse. Frankie, when did Frankie get here? I've been here for like a month and a half. Oh Jesus, Frankie! Frankie, you owe me rent, buddy. Yeah, that's too long. <laughs>